said that on the, the day or several days after his beginning awakening, the Buddha surveyed the world with the eye of a Buddha. In other words, he was able to see all beings. And he saw them as on fire, burning with the fires of greed, anger, and delusion, or the fires of passion, aversion, and delusion. One of the reasons we're here is because we feel that our minds are on fire, and we'd like to put them out. Because passion is like a fire. Aversion is like a fire. Delusion is a little bit harder to compare with a fire, but it's still burning away in the mind. And so much of the teaching revolves around this imagery of burning, like the fire of khandhas. One of the meaning of khandha is like the trunk of a tree, an upad on a kanto that we chant every morning. Okay, that's a trunk of a tree serving as fuel, fuel for our clinging. And the cling gives rise to the fires of greed, anger, and delusion. It gives rise to the fires of aging, illness, and death. There are lots of fires that burn in our mind. Remorse is also a fire. In fact, the Thai word for remorse is ranjai, which means heat in the heart. One of the reasons why we practice the precepts is to help put out the fire of remorse. In other words, we make up our minds that we're not going to do anything that's unskillful. So that when time comes to sit down and meditate, there's not this burning in the heart. As for things done in the past, well, there's nothing you can do about them. You develop equanimity. But if you get yourself all tied up about remorse about the past, then it makes it difficult to do skillful things in the present moment, because your energy is being siphoned off. Just make up the mind, okay, what I did in the past is past. What we're going to focus on now is the present moment. So on the hand, there is this negative meaning to fire in the mind. But there's also a positive kind of fire. It corresponds to the different words they have for burning in Pali. A lot of the words for burning mean just like the, you know, the conflagration of a fire. The, the flames flare up, flare up, flare up. Constantly agitated, constantly flickering, changing. But there's another kind of burning that we've seen. We're all familiar with it. It's like the burning of an oil lamp. It's a steady burn. And the verb for that is jayati, which is related to the word for jhana. As the mind develops concentration, that it's like the flame that begins to grow steady. Even though it's still burning, at least it becomes more useful. You can read by the light of an oil lamp. It's much more difficult to read by the light of a fire, because the fire is always flickering. It's not good for your eyes, but the oil lamp is steady. And in that steady light, you can see a lot more clearly. Shadows don't do weird things on the wall. And the flickering of the flame doesn't do weird things on the page you're trying to read. So what we're doing as we meditate is trying to take this burning in the mind, which is flickering all over the place, and bring it to a steady burn. Ultimately, you want all the fires to go out. That's what nirvana is all the, the name for nirvana is about. But before you can get there, you've got to bring the mind to this steady burn. So what, and part of the way you do that is to protect it. You know that if the flame is subject to a lot of wind, it's not going to stay steady. So you do your best to protect that little flame you've got going. In other words, you protect the mind from all other thoughts aside from the one thought of the breath. That's what you're going to be burning into. It usually starts off as a very small little flame. You've got one spot in the body where you focus. It's like setting fire to something that you've got to protect. In the beginning, the, the flame is going to, as you light the flame, it's going to be very small. But then as you protect it, it begins to grow. So whatever little sense of stillness you can find as you focus on the breath, learn how to protect that. Learn to have respect for it.
Because after all, little fires can, gr can grow into big fires. And you want this particular fire to stay as a steady flame. So whatever little steady moments you have in the mind, learn how to protect them. Don't go throwing them away. Remember when I started meditating, I was always looking for the lights and looking for the visions and all the other fancy stuff that you read about in the books. And of course, as a result, I was overlooking those little spells of stillness were there in the mind. They just didn't have the lights, they didn't have the action. And so I tended to disregard them as a result, and meditation wasn't getting anywhere. It's only when you realize that there are these little still moments in the mind that keep coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. Well, when they're there, learn to appreciate them. That's what right effort is all about. You learn to see them when they start. Cup your hands around them and let them grow. Learn how to protect them and try to maintain that steadiness. Once it catches, in other words, once you're able to stay with whatever still spots you can find in the body, okay, then it will grow, it will spread out. That's why all the images that the Buddha uses but with reference to jhana have to do with filling the body with rapture, filling the body with pleasure, filling with equanimity. And finally, there's a sense of light, a very still light that spreads throughout the body. The John Lee's image is of a flame that fills the, the mantle of a Coleman lantern. When it's set just right, okay, just the threads just glow all throughout the mantle. The flame doesn't flicker, it's just this steady, steady light. That's the quality you want to develop as you meditate, the sense of being steadily with the body, steadily with the whole body. And either there'll be a sense of actual, you know, sensing a light in the body or just kind of a feeling, a kind of a glowing feeling. I feel steady throughout all little parts of the body you can feel. This is how you take the, the mind's tendency to burn and put it to good use. Because once you have that steadiness, okay, then as I said, you can see things a lot more clearly. There's the light and there's the stillness. the prerequisites for clear seeing. In other words, if things are flickering, and that, now they're on, now they're off, now they're on, now they're off. Well, you've seen it what it's like. You go out and light a fire out in the forest, and the flames flicker up, and all of a sudden you can, you can imagine all kinds of weird things coming in from the trees, which is the way the mind normally is when it's flickering with passion, aversion, and delusion. But once you have a steady light, you can see things for precisely what they are. So as you're practicing concentration, this is the quality you're trying to develop. Remember, in the beginning, it's awfully small. But as the Buddha said, don't. There, a small fire is one of the things you cannot overlook just because it's small, because it can grow into a huge conflagration. So the question is, what are you going to do with these little fires in the mind? Are you just going to let them burn and flicker away, or are you going to get them as a steady burn that enables you to see what's going on inside? to light up what's going on inside. Because it's from the steady burn that the next step comes, the insight, that frees the flame. That's what they thought happened to a fire when it went out back in the time of the Buddha. Just didn't, it didn't go out of existence, it was freed. It was freed from its attachment to its fuel, freed from its clinging, freed from its agitation. Because a real surprise is you get the mind still like this. He said, there's still an element of stress, there's still an element of change, but it's a lot more subtle. There's still a burning going on in the mind. But because things are, are a lot more subtle and steady, it's able, you're able to see where they're coming from, precisely what's happening. And that's when you can let go. The flame is freed. So try to sense those little still moments in the mind and protect them. The same way that you'd protect a little tiny fire that you're trying to start, even though there's wind outside. 
for you to blow it out. Okay, you try to keep that steady little flame going until it takes. And if it goes out, well, just light it again, light it again. If you protect what you've got, then you find it. It'll become the, the light that you need in order to see yourself, see what's going on clearly. If you don't appreciate these little moments of stillness, if you don't protect them, then they won't be able to help very much. So that quality of appreciation, what the Buddha called respect for concentration, this is one aspect of what he means. Respect these little moments of, of stillness, of light in the mind. Protect them so that they can grow. <laughs>